Welcome to a fantastic edition of Rebellion's educational series. We look to teach the quants of tomorrow and the quants of today, and I'm so excited to have BMLL CEO Paul Humphrey with us. Paul's an awesome individual, and BMLL is a super fantastic company. Level 3 data, which has become so important to quants of today, provides an in-depth look at the market. Level 1 quotes, which we all know are what's available, level 3 quotes are what's not available, show the true depth, the true liquidity of the markets. And as a quant today, understanding liquidity is priceless, whether it's a long model or a risk model. In fact, at the Fordham conference two weeks ago, a member of Two Sigma was mentioning that they're using BMLL for their risk models and other quants using BMLL for their long models. So you can do so much with this level three data. And I'm so excited to have Paul on. Paul's one of my favorites. Paul, thank you so much for coming on today. Oh, well, thank you very much for inviting me, Alex. I really appreciate it. Yeah. So I guess my first question is, what are the market participants of today looking for, in your view? Well, first and foremost, they're looking to compete. Quants are now demanding access to full depth level three data, historical data, which is, they believe, the most predictive and structured market data available. And I think it'll probably help if I give, you know, let me give a, a very quick overview of what is level three. So level one, as you know, best bid and offer plus the trades captured from real time data and it samples midpoint price, addressable traded volume and average spread. That's level one. Level two is when you get aggregated order book by price plus trades. So the aggregated order book includes the average execution cost and the average liquidity cost away from uh, midpoint. Level three, on the other hand, is the full order book. All individual orders and messages and individual order behavior, including order fill probability, order resting times, order queue dynamics, and predictive date uh, capabilities. And increasingly, Alex, People want access to that quality data and they don't want to have to take it raw so they have to do all the hard work doing the heavy lifting to incorporate it into their environment. And we help them with that. It's funny, the amount of jokes made at the Fordham conference last week about dirty data that they purchased is, was just endless. The amount of data providers who just offer such uh, terrible, uh, dirty, dirty data. I mean, when Rebellion Research first purchased data from Bloomberg, we found 12% on average uh, had flaws of uh, our historical data that we were given. And whereas BMLL here, you guys have extremely clean uh, data ready to use immediately. It's true. I mean, you can't rely on historical data from a real-time provider to give you the required level of granularity. It's that simple. The amount of lost data, wrong data, dropped packets that comes with real-time uh, market uh, data providers makes the data almost useless. And this is exactly what you found. Uh, we speak to clients daily who spend most of their time dealing with poor quality data. But until now, uh, the level one and level two market has been serviced almost exclusively by real-time providers. And there has to be a better alternative. And because we take packet capture from the bottom of the book, and then we derive level two and level one from it, um, we can, you know, our right to win is on quality. And separately, you know, if you're going to do that yourselves, a huge infrastructure is required. We are seeing that firms um, are no longer willing to build that themselves. Now, huge infrastructure. The the data that's necessary to compete has just, it's blown up. Um, you, you look at it, an Emmanuel Derman, uh, one of the most famous quants around, and he says the days of a very smart quant being able to find some good data, build an algo, sit back and smoke his cigar and you know wait for his Rolls Royce to come in. Those days are over. You need to access so much data for your risk, so much data for your long, and then cleaning it is a whole nother ball of wax. Uh, Two Sigma's uh, Claudia Perlick, one of the most famous data scientists around, also an NYU professor, actually said that 90% of her day 
is now spent cleaning data. And so mm. the idea that such brilliant minds in the quant hedge fund world are wasting away just cleaning data, I mean, that's that's one of the reasons I was so attracted to BMLL's story. Uh, clean data is so tough to find. And at the same time, level three data is so predictive from both a risk and a long perspective. I mean, when you consider just a, a marketplace, level three data actually tells you how many buyers and sellers are really there. And consider this, Paul. When I started back in 1996, 1997, the retail portion of trading in the New York Stock Exchange was between like 1% and 3%. <laughs> As of a week ago, I just joined the board of this firm called TraderWare. It's a, a social media a trading site. According to their data, 35% of the flow now is coming from retail. When you have that much flow from retail, the actual order book has become priceless. You need to know where the money flow is occurring at every minute. And so, uh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. You know, people forget that level three data, especially when you have it curated in this way, quick, contains every trading intention that's ever lived, right? Yep. And it's mind blowing when you think of that. And when you choose level one and level two data for, um, from a level three specialist, you gain data that is complete and it's in a consistent format. And that's how we differentiate ourselves. But provide, yeah, we perform 400 million automated daily checks overnight to conduct that, you know, make sure that data is robust uh, and has, goes through a quality process. Uh, high precision timestamps directly from the venue. No ambiguity there. Um, every unique field from the venue without information loss. And that, as I said, every trading intention captured. Um, and high quality data sets can do that. And that way, you know, quants can dedicate 100% of their time to extracting insights rather than wrangling with data, as you, as you mentioned. Yeah, I mean, you've just got hedge funds that need to make a short position in a stock. And now they can use BML's data to figure out if there's maybe two or three gigantic family offices who need to dump 8% of the stock over the next two months. <laughs> so that's a terrible short, to, a, a terrible long to have. And so, you know, when you're dealing with 35% of the flow being retail, people forget that retail includes 100 millionaires, billionaires, multi-billionaires. And these people often run their money through individual entities and they buy large pieces of stock. Even a mayor, Michael Bloomberg, worth $100 billion, he trades. And he'll trade fifty million, a hundred million dollars of Macy's, and so that's you know it's not just you know Dr. Jim in Ohio. We're talking about these extremely wealthy people trading gigantic blocks of stock that frankly will move the market. And so now that retail is such a gigantic portion, frankly, level three data to me, I it, it's a, it, it's a data set that almost every major hedge fund over five ten billion of uh, assets needs to have in their inventory um it's it's almost you know it's almost a look must what, have I can't, I can't understand why they wouldn't look what's going on across our industry the whole industry the sophistication levels are going up and up and up every day you talk about that high percentage of retail trading you know people shouldn't assume it's dumb right and and, and it's dumb oh, money not it's not dumb money it's very very sophisticated indeed and i keep continuing to read comments and posts about how important data reliability and consistency is to that process and how cleaning of data will almost certainly, you know, in some way uh, result in, in degradation of data quality. And, and this has become a huge area of concern. Data wrangling, as it is described, is a task where, you know, it's widely reported that quant spend, as you put it, 90% of their time. But if they don't do it themselves, there will be in invariably you know, some areas of degradation and a loss of reliability and consistency. We just don't agree with that. Some of these comments out there are misguided and uninformed. Uh, obviously, you know, BMLL, we exclusively buy our data direct from the source, um, direct from the matching engine or a partner co-located with it. So unless you start at this point, how else can you hope to provide historical data with only de minimis errors. And then we preserve all the raw fields from the original data. But we also have a normalized layer 
for managing trade condition codes, market state, across multiple markets and regions. And we call it harmonization because we engineer that data into a consistent format so we don't lose any individual exchange unique identifiers, flags, and codes. And more, most importantly, we have a rigorous and robust set of documentation around our process. The documentation is clear and transparent. No secrets. Our clients understand the processes clearly. And we have a team of client-facing quants who work with our clients to get the best from the data in our environment. There's no trade-off for quality in our opinion. There is no black box at BMLL, no secret algorithm, just quality engineering, which is transparent, which is there for those that understand the task. And anyone who really understands it knows the amount of work to get to that point is non-trivial from an engineering perspective. No, the, the Boeing 737 MAX incidents really kind of brought home to the general public who don't have the sophistication and knowledge that our viewers and you have, Paul, that when you have corrupted data, the, the very best models, it does not matter who you are, the very best models will fail 100% of the time with corrupted data. This is not an LTCM situation where the model itself made bad calls. Any model will fail with poor data. It just cannot survive that way. And so, mm. you know, hearing from market, market participants that you guys provide uh, some of the cleanest data they've ever seen is one of the reasons I really wanted to have you on this call. I, I you know, I love clean data. Um, there's something as, as a quantum almost 30 years, there's something religious to me about clean data. And um, it's you know, one of the reasons I, I've really, I've grown so fond of BMLL and I think their product is uh, such a fantastic offering. And so I wanted to have you on and so that quants will see, uh, you know, I, I, I don't think you'll stay very uh, independent for long, though. You guys are just part of you were just bought by Snowflake. And I, I, I expect a larger player to acquire BML in the next few years. Uh, you guys oh. have a very good product. And it's just, it's you know, there, there, are, there are only so many good products in Wall Street uh, that have a need from the market. And you guys have a product that the market has a need for. It's not a question, should I, maybe, it's kind of useful. No, no, no. Level three data for... I. The majority of algorithms, the majority of risk uh, programs is a requirement. So um, anyway, you want well, to talk a little bit type? No, uh, sure. I mean, look, we got we got wonderful investors. Um, um, NAS, NASDAQ, FactSet, Snowflake, as you've just mentioned, and, and, and some powerful uh, private equity companies like IQ Capital behind us. Um, and, you know, you assume that, uh, you know, at some point um, – yeah, BML will be acquired, or maybe we'll be the we'll be the acquiring party. Who knows? We we don't know if we're predator or we're prey yet. But one thing's for sure: we're building a great product. And you know, this is what we're doing to address this infrastructure and resources problem that uh, that's in 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 the marketplace. You know, that whole debate around buying versus building. The cost oh. of technology has come down, making. Um, a more level playing field. However, the availability of the necessary data to drive that quant research is still enormously costly. Um, however, firms no, no longer need to do that heavy lifting themselves and that data engineering themselves. You, you don't just have to go and buy the raw data yourself, clean it and harmonize it. Um, when you've got providers like uh, us out there who do that heavy lifting for you and we want to enable our clients to spend 100% of their time on the value add and the stuff that differentiates them. That's what's yeah. important. And we can enable you know, simply just to, the, the clients to hit the, hit the ground running. And that's what our aim is. No, enabling clients is definitely the, um, the mo one of the most important things that drew me to BMLL. Plus, uh, Paul, I spoke to a few of your former colleagues from years back and the, the reverence and respect that uh, your former colleagues have for you is really just wonderful. Um, another reason why I'm excited <laughs> to have you on today. Um, you know, in, in this industry, karma is very important in this industry, and how you treat others will come back to you 5, 10, 20 years later. So, uh, Paul, I hope uh, hope you guys are another Dow Jones, or you still out for a fantastic uh, price one day. Either way, um, excited to grab a beer with you sometime in the city soon. Well, I'll tell you what, from your mouth to God's ears, Alex, that would be great. But the future is very exciting for sure. I mean, I'm yeah. working with a, a fantastically talented team. Um, 
And we're very much looking forward to what the future holds for BMLL. Um, we've we've been very clear about our ambitions um, over the past few years. We said we would expand our coverage. We said we would put an office into the United States, and we said we would um, you know broaden the but, capability but not the world of the analytical uh, skill. I, I, not I was a little tired the World Trade Center, but you know, still love you anyway. <laughs> Well, well, the team, uh, the team are in and around New York City, so it's been great. But uh, no, we're certainly really excited about the future, Alex. Yeah, no, thank you so much for coming on, Paul, and uh, I look forward to uh, hanging with you sometime this summer. Absolutely, and thank you for having me on, Alex. I oh. really appreciate it. Pleasure was all mine. Pleasure was all mine.